Good afternoon YouTube viewers and subscribers. So on my table today is I removed the engine test stand that was uh, the last one I purchased that came from the UK uh, to illustrate some points because I did go and attempt to uh, mount just a very standard size four-stroke engine to it which was an Enya 53 and encountered some difficulties which pretty much just uh, really kind of pissed me off in the design of this thing so I figured I'd just uh, a take it off and explain some of these things and B do what I should have done to begin with which was buy the one that was made in the USA or designed in the USA because after looking at those pictures a little more closely some of the design elements that this one is lacking are incorporated into the new one so uh, with that said right now I've got this GMS 76 engine mounted on here and if you're actually this is not a bad stand so don't get me wrong I'm not saying this is a bad stand however if you run the same the, the, the wide range of displacement engines that I run you will have problems using this stand uh, for several reasons um, this beam bearer here is really thick it's probably about twice as thick as it needs to be and the screws that hold it down are not countersunk or this is not countersunk to accept these screws so they're going to be up and in the way and let me post some pictures here real quick of when I mounted this Inya engine to this stand and show you some of the issues I had with it So that was part of the issue was that the engine had to mount be pushed so far back just to, for the carb to clear that not only did it bring the prop a lot closer to the edge because I didn't have this butted right up to the edge of my wood I you know had a little bit of wood there but even if I had up there uh, running an engine like an OSFS 26 surpass engine uh, might be problematic I have not tried to mount it on this engine stand um, so and these one thing I did mention is the length of the screws that came with this thing this is what came with the stand and this is the piece of wood that I put underneath my already half inch thick or three quarter inch thick uh, test stand top and with these long wood screws and with these attached with this stand attached like this it actually held this thing in place very well for when I ran this engine I know you haven't seen the video of that engine run yet but suffice it to say that it did work very well so that this flimsy throttle cable which in and of itself not necessarily a bad thing uh, the fact that you can kind of move it around is fine but this the clevis on here is very weak in fact the little uh, pin that goes through there has already started to break so I'm gonna have to find maybe another clevis I can put on here just solder it or whatever I'm not sure so anyway some of the frustration with this new stand prompted me to purchase one of those ones from the US made in the US and don't get me wrong I'm not saying that the one that made in the UK is bad because it's made in the UK I'm just using that as just a way to differentiate the two because they do look very similar on the eBay site they look very very similar but one that's made in the UK is very proud of that and it says made in the UK on the bottom as you'll see in the image so they seem to be really proud of it so that's why I'm kind of using that as a differentiation uh, between the two stands but so here's the box that the new one came in as you can see I don't even have it's it's large enough that um, it won't even fit in this frame completely until I move that other one out of the way so what I'm gonna do is and, and if you saw my first video on the other one you'll see that that the box it came in was like this it was all just kinda jammed in there and that was for an overseas trip which I understand uh, shipping costs are, are gone up a lot and it costs money to ship those things but this is shipped within the United States and uh, looks pretty damn good to me so let's uh, open this thing up and see what we've got okay so it looks like well, 
lot of newspaper here. I want to make sure I don't throw anything away that's pertinent here. Instructions, more newspaper, and the stand. And then I think that's everything. Let me just grab this newspaper out of the way real quick. If something's missing, I'm sure it's in there. So here's what you get with this stand. Here's our, it looks like this comes with a um, flex cable also, but you'll notice right off the bat, the hardware is different and better. It's actually, uh, looks like a golden rod, nylon link or nylon rod or quick link that's soldered in place, so that's not gonna come off. And that's about it there. So that's, that clevis isn't gonna be breaking anytime soon. It'll definitely last longer than that plastic one. This is just the fuel tank thing. So I didn't really have any kind of issues with the fuel tank setup of that other one. It's It works really well. This one obviously does not include a fuel tank, um, but it does have this little area here where you can slip your throttle cable through. Now whether that will ever get used or not, I don't know because obviously I run engines with a throttle or sometimes the throttle's on this side, sometimes it's on this side, sometimes it's higher or lower, and I don't usually change the height of the stand very much. But uh, So the only differences I see here right now are they're both height adjustable this base is much larger and it has two hold downs. This base is narrower and only has a single hold down. It's got, uh, let's see here, I guess you just unscrew it. And, you know, on, in all honesty, I never did attempt to actually raise this or lower it, but it's a very simple thing. You unscrew the knurled knobs and you move the platform up or down very, very easily. Um, so those are the comparison to these the tanks so this one does not come with a tank is made out of some plastic type material this one's all metal comes with this tank which this tank I've kinda of grown to like uh, initially I had misgivings about it but the thing that's really cool about it other than the fact that it's just huge um, is that it has these ports here so that when you're not using the tank you can just plug your fuel lines in there and keep them from getting garbage in them uh, every other time I have to put a piece of brass tubing to connect my tubes together to keep from getting air and garbage in there. So that's kind of cool. So there's the comparison of these two uh, fuel tank stands. Let's look at what our engine stand here looks like. So it's very well packaged. I'm not really sure what this is. Let's see here real quick. Instructions maybe. And yeah, just some instruction information. So I'll have to peruse that if I get into a bind, but <coughs> I've used enough engine stands that I think I have a basic understanding of how it operates. So the other thing that was noted in the ad for this was that it comes with engine spacers too, which I believe is what's in this little velvet pouch thing. Let's see if we can get this thing open. Oh. Some real mounting hardware. So let's see here. Let's compare that versus this. Uh, which would you rather hold an engine stand down with when you're running a big engine. Okay, and it comes with three spacers. Now, these spacers, I've seen in the ad, if you look at the pictures in the ad, uh, they're using them to go behind the bearers here for some reason. I'm not quite sure why you would need that, but it's a nice thing to have. So, they're giving you some accessories there and some decent mounting hardware. Now this thing is, is packaged really well. And it comes with the Allen key or the hex key to adjust it. So that's it in there. So here's our stand. And I think I've got it. Pull this 
this out. Let's see here. Now, the thing that these two stands do share in common is the same U-shape uh, bracket stand, which also means that they're only really held in place with this so that when you go to loosen it, you know, these things, you loosen it up too much to get your engine in there and they can flip and flop down and it kind of makes actually installing an engine rather difficult. Uh, not difficult, it's just, it can be a little bit more challenging. But if you look here, this is the thickness of the bear, and these screws are actually fit into countersunk holes so that they're not going to be in the way of a needle valve or anything like that, provided it's up high enough anyway that'll clear this. This looks like, even this looks like it's maybe slightly thicker than the the bears on my or the mount hold downs on my PSP stand but my PSP stand came with two sets a thin one and a really thick one for for larger really large engines I don't use it all that often because I haven't really found the need to um, but other than that these two things look rather similar actually I kind of wish I'd taken this engine off here first now Maybe if I do it like this, you can see this new stand is considerably wider. Now it's wider this way, but narrower this way, and has the offset holes for the larger hardware they give you. One thing that I think is interesting here is that they're painted there's a black side and a red side and it looks like this is smart so I just learned something about this this is the stationary side of the side you want to keep more stationary so that this side doesn't sit there and slide around this is your movable side so that when you put your engine in here all you gotta do is loosen this side and put it up in there whereas this one doesn't have that at all so you loosen this up, they both become really loosey-goosey and they can fall off to the side. And that's, in fact, that's how I stored it, is I would just loosen this up enough so that they'd fall down to the side. So imagine trying to mount an engine on there when you have to try and hold one and you don't really know exactly where you're going to position it. You have to try and loosen it or tighten it just enough to hold it in place. Then kind of slide this one up there and then you're like, oh, this is too tight. I have to loosen it up a little bit so I can get the lug in there. It's kind of a pain. And those of you that own this stand know exactly what I'm talking about. So this one is more intelligently designed because it has screws going in the bottom that go in there and it looks like they probably go right into this piece here and hold this side in place. So this is your stationary side, this is the side, and that's kind of how I use my PSP stand. My PSP stand obviously is a totally different design, it's on a big aluminum block with slots cut in it, it uses T-slots, or T-slot nuts. but and each side can be moved uh, fore and after, side to side, but I always usually keep one side torqued down really hard so that I'm only moving one side, just like this one. So that is cool. Let's see here if there's any difference. Now it looks like the thickness of the material is the same. So there are some differences between these two designs. Um, obviously I'll have to drill some new holes for this one, but right off out of the bat or out of the chute here this one looks to be a better stand now granted it wasn't the same amount of money it was a little bit more but it was here very quickly and it looks like some of the design features in this and some of the accessories you get are probably well worth it over the one the engine stand design in the UK so that's my quick and dirty comparison of these two stands uh, the next engine you see running, well, it'll probably be that GMS 76 on there because I have run and made a video of that. I just haven't posted it yet. But uh, I'm probably going to go out there and install this stand. Uh, this UK stand could be up for sale. I'm not really sure that I need to keep this one, uh, especially if this one turns out to be so much better. Uh, so anybody that's watching that's in the continental United States, 
that wants to give this UK stand a try, uh, chances are I'll probably be selling it and get rid of it because I don't really need it laying around here. Uh, I'll only sell it within the continental United States because I'm not going to pay for uh, shipping overseas and I'll give you a discount over what I paid for it obviously because it's used. But anyway, that is a quick comparison of these two test stands. Uh, so I hope you learned something. I know I have and I'm excited to get this thing on the stand and try it out. Thank you.